in this alternate Victorian age of our own devising for those not born into the wondrous embrace of the mysteries and perils of the Amazon rainforest. It is a place of darkness, danger, and fear. But not all are daunted by such promised peril. Join us. Join the Leagues of Adventure as three brave adventurers seek out that danger, seek to dispel their own ignorance, to bring the power of their intellect and their passion for discovery, their hunger for fame as they jump into the claws of peril as members of the Leagues of Adventure. Tonight's actual play on the Casting Shadows blog, The Sky is No Limit. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's Robin here from Triple H Games, and once again, we're back here uh, playing Leagues of Adventure, uh, and um, we're just going to do a little bit of character development first. So over to you then, Anthony. Or All right. Weird science what I've asked everybody to do uh, for this session and session four is to help push the the hench people into the limelight. We've uh, we know who they are and what they represent, but uh, we'd like to share that more with the, the viewing audience. So let's start with Ivan. Okay. Or well, Lawrence. <laughs> All right, Ivan playing Lawrence. Uh, let us know about the, the hench people that you are typically responsible for recovering in a troop style play sense. And, you know, what's in this relationship for them? Why are they in the employ of uh, the, their main character? All right, well, then I would be Proctor Johnson, a Scottish, Scottish gentleman uh, in my early 20s, and I'm, I'm one of two uh, Johnsons, not, no relation, that work <laughs> for Mr. Oscar Weinroll, the uh, rather eccentric inventor. And uh, a, uh, is the archetype, my archetype, whatever that may be, is a typical bearer. So I, uh, the character is very strong, you know, very athletic, um, good at survival, um, but I'm a coward. And, and so I, you know, I'll do just about anything to save my own skin when it comes right down to it. So in, in the employ of, of Oscar Weinbold, who is, as I said, eccentric, a bit annoying, um, seems to be able to get his way a lot of times, but really I just can't imagine like, why this guy doesn't get killed every time he goes out in public. Sometimes some he manages not to, but uh, there's a lot of equipment we have to carry. You know, it pays okay, reasonably well. It's better than actually really working for a living. There's a lot of downtime, to be quite honest with you. And that gives me time to make my plans of how I'm going to, to make it big, strike it rich, not be a laborer anymore. You know, uh, a lot of times, gamblers talk to me about maybe we can become kings in Patagonia, get out of, get out of Britain, and they love Britain. Don't get me wrong. I mean, who doesn't like a good rasher of bacon? And all those sort of things. <laughs> of that's Irish, but haggis. I like me some haggis, but the other thing is, I mean, you go out to, a, to another country, you know, this practically uncivilized, and you bring some uh, some uh, knowledge and, and uh, just a, <clears throat> the gumps, the gumption, and the stiff upper lip of, of a man of the, the United Kingdom. You can be, you can be king. So I think maybe Patagonia, which we're getting closer to. But uh, yeah, sometimes I think I'm going to die in this employ, but uh, for the most part, you know, I'm just going to hold on to those coattails just long enough to get myself where I need to go. That's it. All right. Well, that was Proctor. Let's hear about Gamble. Gamble. Yes. So <laughs> I usually play Gamble Johnson, the other uh, bearer and henchman of Oscar. Um, like um, uh, Proctor, um, Gamble is very strong and athletic, uh, but he's not very imaginative, I think. And uh, he hails from Hong Kong. Uh, and he has big ambitions, I think. He, he wants to, to you know, move up in the world and uh, accumulate wealth and, and status. And so he has hitched his fortune to Professor Oscar, right, who's an inventor and is, seems to be going places. So that's an opportunity to, to accumulate wealth. And uh, he has met a kindred spirit in uh, uh, Proctor, although uh, 
Proctor is a bit of a coward, as has been established, but uh, Gamble is quite stubborn and said, you know, he said, once he's determined in his, in his ways, he, he figures, uh, you know, it's the best course of action to get where he wants to go. Um, getting this wealth and, you know, looking for new opportunities. And he has heard of this mythical land of Patagonia, which he really doesn't know much about, but uh, he figures, you know, since it's kind of new, uh, there might be the opportunity to become rich and perhaps even royalty. And so uh, that is uh, why he has uh, uh, joined the, uh, the employ of uh, Professor Oscar, right? A step up in the world. <laughs> and so let's hear about Tanvir Singh. So uh, Tanvir Singh, um, he's in the employ of uh, George Mallory, and they've been together uh, as a unit for many years, um, having been in uh, various military campaigns. Uh, but Tanvir, at heart, is an artist. He's a writer. Uh, he he sees the beauty in the world even though it it displays a lot of cruelty to him um, uh, and that inspires him and in turn it helps to him to inspire other people um, his his major problem is the fact that he's very blase about life you know he's quite happy to run in with where the, the danger is uh, and um, yeah, he's 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 ready to to get stuck in if there's if there's a fight. He's not, he's not he's not scared of that. And you know his relationship with with uh, George is, is 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 based on mutual convenience and respect, and that they've been through a lot of uh, adventures together over the years, uh, which has solidified their their friendship. Nice. I tell you, George, that's a man with his head in the cloud so much he's going to get himself killed one day. <laughs> coming. And last but not least, we have Grover. Uh, Grover Pennyworth. Well, this man, it's a small in stature, uh, almost uh, sickly thin, and a uh, very pallid look, I mean, clammy hands. That's one of the things that people notice about him. And generally, he's he he doesn't want to be seen. He he tends to uh, hide in the shadows. And uh, with his master uh, Lawrence, he's um, he's absolutely in awe of this man. Uh, looks after him in every every way, almost in a groveling way. Uh, and uh, uh, he's a, a complete sycophant, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, he's um, he's he's not he's not actually a, a particularly nice individual to hang around with. <laughs> Although some of the staff aboard uh, the Epiphany absolutely adore him now. <laughs> I can right. imagine. Uh, Let's do one more circle around very quickly. This is a pretty dangerous expedition we are beginning to discover. Uh, what is in this lifestyle for Oscar, an, an inventor? Well, he's, uh, <coughs> he's out for, um, for, for learning about the world. His, his passion is, uh, is science uh, and the weirder the better. Uh, he, he feels that getting out there into into the wilds will help him discover new and interesting ways to apply his engineering skills, uh, and uh, he's also interested in travelling. Uh, he's he's a member of the Travellers Society uh, as well as the Royal Society, and he's looking forward to to venturing into the unknown. Although he's not very keen on the dangerous part of it. But that also attracts him. So uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a very weird mixture of feelings that he has about these things. But yeah, he's interested in, in science and, and uh, looking forward to building new 
gadgets and uh, anything that would help the expedition. Uh, that's that's his uh, that's his outlook. Sounds good. George Mallory. So George is an explorer, and um, you know, like uh, Oscar, he's also um, a member of the Royal Geographical Society and the Travelers Club. And he has lived abroad, right? He's been to several places, including India, where he uh, fought alongside uh, Tanvir Singh, uh, you know, earning his friendship. And uh, uh, George wants to be famous, and he is following on the footsteps of, you know, famous explorers like uh, Sir Francis Burton and. Uh, John Hanning speak, right, with the whole source of the Nile uh, um, discovery and, and fame and, you know, the, the whole pursuit of that um, discovery of new places uh, and the fame that comes with it. And so he, he wants to be like that. He wants to see the world and uh, this uh, opportunity to discover this uh, plateau with dinosaurs and stuff like that. He figures it will cement, you know, his his position within the geographical society and get his name uh, up there with the other uh, famous explorers of the time. So that's pretty much his motivation here. Good. And finally, Lawrence Garibaldi. All right, now, Percy, you better get all this down. So get out your pad. <laughs> this is another another part of the, another part of the story. So you know. George is a nice guy. He really is. And Oscar, he's a sweetheart. You know, an eccentric, but he's a sweetheart. But George, he's in this for the fame. He's in this for the here and now. Me, I'm in this for the glory, for the long haul. When I was a young child, I used to read the books about famous explorers and just acts of daring do and the things that like really fired up the imagination of young young men. And I wanted to be one of those men. You know, I, I used to read those books and say, I want to be just like them. I want to do the kind of things that they did. So here, going out and doing something like this, discovering new creatures, discovering new places, that sort of thing. It's not just to be famous now. It's like I want kids 100 years from now to be reading those books about the books that you will write. <laughs> my my, uh, my life, my, the things that I do, my exploits. So I want to be just like Lawrence Garibaldi. George is after the fame and here now. I'm after immortality. You are going to help me get that, and you'll be immortal with me. The Life and Times of Lawrence Galbaugh, as written by Percy, Percival, whatever. <laughs> All right. Nice. And so, as has become tradition, whether he likes it or not, uh, Aloy, could you please give us a brief recap of how we wound up in the dire straits I'm about to throw you into. <laughs> that's, that's correct. All right, so um, previous session, we started with the uh, assassination attempt upon the person of uh, uh, John St. John Smythe, our contact uh, from the Royal Society here in Belém, Brazil. He was on the deck of our airship, the Epiphany, and we were, you know, just meeting and getting things started when a dart appeared in his neck and he keeled over. Um, George's immediate reaction was to try and help the man and remove the dart and remove the poison. So, you know, we bled the wound and sucked out the poison and uh, managed to at least keep him alive for the time being. Uh, we sprang into action trying to identify and neutralize the assassins before they killed us as well. And so um, George and uh, Lawrence ran off into the jungle uh, because we were on the beach, like right next to the tree line. So, you know, um, George ran down the ramp with no weapons or anything. He just ran down uh, asking Tanvir to cover him with a rifle. And uh, Lawrence, being a more daring fellow, spotted uh, a figure in the nearby uh, trees, and so he jumped from the airship onto the tree lines, uh, you know, onto the tree itself, uh, in pursuit of this very small 
figure which seemed to be some sort of reptile human hybrid. Um, we pursued across the, 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 the brush uh, until we finally came to face to face with this, you know, creature uh, and tried to subdue the creature before it, it threw like a spiked weapon at us or could manage to stun us with the blowgun, right? Uh, in the ensuing scuffle, we determined that this figure was actually a human female of very short stature, dressed in this armor-like reptile, reptilian skin, including like a mask and everything. Uh, in the process, Lawrence gets stuck with the spines on the back of the armor, which turn out to be poisoned as well. And so, you know, we, we manage to subdue the creature and head back to the ship. While we are doing this, um, Oscar is, uh, is running for his weapons, uh, and he finds, they discover that there is a second figure uh, who has climbed on, on, on the ship, onto the ship. And so he rushes off with the aid of the uh, henchmen, uh, and finds a second, you know, uh, human dressed as a reptilian figure trying to stab the ship, you know, and, and screaming uh, into the heavens, right, and trying to, to kill the ship. And uh, pursuit follows, and o Oscar winds up shooting a crossbow bolt into the creature and, and uh, killing it. You know, it plummets from the ship into the, into the ship itself, where the body is later recovered by the Johnsons, I believe. Uh, we managed to bring the people back, and again, it's discovered that this figure is an elderly uh, man, some sort of tribal elder is our presumption. Uh, they are covered in tattoos, and we managed to spot a tattoo of what seems to be a flying dinosaur, right? Like a pteranodon, pterodactyl type of creature. Um, we make attempts to communicate with the uh, woman who is still alive, and uh, we do manage to figure out that she is liberate, right? So she, she, she draws what seems to be cuneiform script. Uh, can't remember if it was a blackboard or something that we had. I think it was. And so um, sand we on do manage. Oh, sand on the deck. That's what we did. So we do manage to figure out that they have written language, and there might be a chance of communicating. But we didn't get very far. Uh, we did get a sense that they worship the flying reptiles, right? The flying uh, dinosaurs. And uh, as we're in the process of trying to get more information out of her, we are notified that uh, Sinjin Smythe, who is now in a, in a cabin inside the airship, is uh, ill and, and, and spouting, you know, shouting and agitated. So we rush over to his cabin and we get to hear a diatribe of what seems to be nonsense and gibberish, but uh, at least uh, George has the presence of mind to take down notes on what he said, something about the river of the gods, white rock teeth, something about a gorge, uh, into the caverns of the mother, and under the fiery eye go. Uh, because George figures, you know, either the man is completely delusional, right, and is, you know, just seeing things, or he is confused, but actually could be spouting memories or recollections from his interviews of the original explorers who had been to the plateau, right? Our target plateau where the dinosaurs live, right? Uh, so George figures it might be a clue or it might be nothing, but it, you know, no harm is done in taking some notes. And as, you know, in the process of this diatribe, he just becomes agitated and suddenly keels over, presumably dead once again. <laughs> presumably dead. Yes. Yeah, so right. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? He totally forgot about it. <laughs> I can't believe it. I had to make a, an antidote myself. I'm sorry, I forgot well, about the well, antidote. Yes. Well, of course, of course. Oh, we have to talk to them, blah, blah, blah. I seem to remember somebody jump, I was jumping. Dying. Yeah, he was dying. jumping off the ship. Sweat pouring down my face as I hastily mixed an antidote, just using 
you know, my chem knowledge of chemistry and, and a little bit of intestinal fortitude. <laughs> At the last second, was managed to, to drink this. Almost died. And not emotions. Emotions, yes. Yes. <laughs> and now, as, as it turns out, I'm just pretty much wiped out and, and yeah, about to, I'm, I'm very unhealthy at this moment. Footnote in this. Barely. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, barely, barely. You are standing. exhausted. Yes. That's the, the term. <laughs> exhausted. All right. Well, now it's my turn. <laughs> so, St. John Smythe, of course, had stiffened and gave the appearance of collapsing in sudden death, you know, into the arms of, of Oscar, you know, in, in typical dramatic fashion, you know, his, his face purples and his tongue lolls and his, his body grows stiff and he topples against, against the inventor and, you know, his, his heels and his knees are slamming again the, the thin padding of, of the tiny bunk uh, that he launched himself from. But then after a moment of not breathing, a moment of seemingly no heartbeat, he enters into a similar convulsive pattern that you saw not too long ago when Lawrence went through the rough ride of his antidote. And I would like a biology check from Lawrence. Oh, absolutely. And you have a bonus of two dice because of your long experience through the last episode. All right. Dealing with uh, this particular substance. Excellent. All right. Well, I, yeah, I, it's, uh, it's pretty tough. I mean, how tough this is, I've got tough covered. All right. Uh, one structural thing, we are, of course, playing ubiquity, so style points carry on. And, of course, if you don't have any, you'll have to, to earn some. So uh, what are people's style reservoir at the moment? Zero for George, two for Lawrence, four for Oscar. What a hoarder of stuff. Obviously, it's something dramatic, old boy. Obviously, I'm not very stylish. <laughs> it's a private, you know, inward-focused style. All right. So, with three successes, um, a lot of what you've just witnessed and previously experienced just moments before, you know, clicks. It, it makes a certain amount of sense. The two witnesses who were described as surviving, right, had been resistant to treatment and had been locked in a delirium for, well, it's weeks now, because you heard uh, earlier this afternoon from John St. John Smythe that they were still delirious. They were still hallucinating, and it was difficult to get any kind of real um, information from them. But St. John Smythe has had a lot of the, the poison diluted thanks to the, the heroic self-sacrifice of George Mallory, whose you know, uh, mouth is, is beginning to regain full function. Uh, and you had been able to dose yourself, probably overdose yourself, with uh, the antidote. But those two gentlemen had not had access to that at all. Oh. Okay. No. And so, for this grand revelation and for getting a complete success in time of need, you, sir, gain one stop. Yay! Excellent. No. Well, I don't know if I, if I can make a little bit more than that. It might be able to help Smythe. Because otherwise, I'm not really sure if he's going to stay in that delirious state like the others. I mean, we did get most of the poison out. But... Seems some, to be some sort of delayed reaction. Yeah. That's, that's a good idea, Lawrence. It's yeah. possible. I, I've got to go over. I, I yes. go over. I need to need some tea and Sir, some, uh, yes. crumpus or something. So I, I'm just I'm about to Sir, go yes. over here. Sir, did, did, did Sir want his favorite jam with those crumpets? Oh, yes, please, please. Uh, yeah, okay. 
Simpsons 5 is quite a large individual, which, you know, and the explorers were described as being emaciated and, uh, you know, uh, consumed by fever. So there's a, there is a, a good correlation there. And his convulsions are beginning to subside, which allows you to hear now that his heels aren't beating a tattoo uh, against, you know, the, the wood of, of his bunk. It allows you to hear just in the distance the call of a military trumpet. In, of course, for George and Tanvir Singh, this is a very recognizable, uh, not trumpet, bugle call uh, of the arrival of British forces. Up on deck, you can hear people moving around and the lookouts are, are shouting back and forth that indeed um, Her Majesty's armed forces are trooping out of the jungle and onto the beach. Ah. Now imagine for a moment what it is that they are seeing. Sinjin Smythe, a local representative attached to the embassy, a member in high standing, not of the Royal Geographic Society, but the Royal Cartographic Society. He had set up this very large tent pavilion. You know, he had carted ice and ice cream and cakes and, uh, you know, fantastic ice sculpture. This is an impossible situation. And then when the Epiphany arrived and settled in for its landing, its, its ducted fans blew all of that down the length of the beach. He was kind enough not to say anything about it. He just said so, <laughs> that his tent had suffered some inclement weather, but <laughs> <laughs> a sudden windstorm. They see an, an armored aerial prototype warship hovering over the beach and armed guards on the deck of a ship at alert, still at general quarters, you may recall. That's true, yes. This is what they, and no sign of Sinjin Smythe, this is what they're, the, the sight that they are greeted as they come out of the jungle onto the beach. Uh, George definitely wants to go on deck, and you know, when he hears the bugle, it's like, uh, is this the, the other Zeppelin arriving? Our rivals have caught up to us, or what is this? Uh, come, Tanvir, let's let's have a look while Lawrence prepares the uh, antidote. And so <clears throat> I head up on deck. Well, George, this. George, could you see if there's some Claude maybe could cut me a piece of that cake as well? Of course, of course. You, know, you need your strength to perform the, uh, the proper calculation. In, in the last episode, Jean-Claude had locked himself in the kitchen <laughs> claiming to want nothing to do with any of you anymore. That is true. Uh, Oscar's <laughs> going to be quite excited about this experimental craft, I should think. This, uh, this sh new ship. So, oh, that's our ship. It's our ship, sorry. I, thought, ship. Oh, no, 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 okay. yeah. I think you should still be excited about it. I'm uh, definitely <laughs> excited about it. <laughs> All right. So I will try to spot, you know, who, who's in charge, right? The, 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 the oh, must well, be an officer in, in charge in front. Or that's something. easy. Yeah. And uh, actually, could we please have... Uh, just a simple intelligence check, right? Double your intelligence for recognition. Add in your rank from the Royal Geographic Society. Which is the anyone who's a member and on deck can make that same that same roll. But I'm going to give two additional dice to George because of his military backer. Oh. 
Uh, maybe I should have bought some triple ace dice. <laughs> what is that? Right uh, I, I, I only have two successes out of... Oh, wow. Up. Out of eight. That went to four, six, eight dice and only got two successes. So, All right. not off to a good start. <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember his first name. You can see his rank, right? Uh, he's, a, he's a lieutenant, which we're going to go with a feeling like maybe he used to have a higher rank, like maybe something has happened to his standing. Uh, he may have been, you know, his commission may have been reduced and he may have been sent off here uh, far from a cushy posting, right, patrolling the jungle in uh, the, the, the heat of summer. But uh, um, you do uh, remember his last name because it was, it's a very unusual last name because it's more commonly a piece of furniture. His name is something, something Credenza. So Lieutenant Credenza. But that first name is just not. It's not, not coming to me. Right. Now, he's at the last, he's at the end of youth, drifting uncomfortably into middle age. So his uniform is tight in places where it shouldn't be tight and loose in places where it shouldn't be loose. So his, his chest is beginning to collapse. His belly is beginning to expand. Uh, he's got the chicken leg thing going, going on. And of course, he's sweating buckets, but ignoring it in typical stoic fashion. And he has, in, he has grown this monumental mustache, which has become salt and pepper, and his hairline has become very curious about what the back of his head looks like and is starting to <laughs> retreat in that direction. Mm -hmm. You can tell because you know, he takes off his, his jungle pith helmet you know, to, to mop his brow discreetly and then and back on. Yeah. So I'll, uh, George, I lean over the uh, the railing of the ship, right, and I, I squint sort of in his direction, and I, I yell out, uh, uh, Nigel, uh, <laughs> Nigel Credenza, uh, I mean Lieutenant Credenza. When I notice his rank, is that you? It's the first name I can think of. So, <laughs> and, and so I immediately start strolling down the uh, the ramp in his direction. All right. Now, in last episode, it didn't actually come up, but you had a minus two penalty to social roles because oh. of the numbness caused from the poison. This has been reduced to a penalty of one. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you're strolling down the ramp to the beach. He's looking at you incredulous. He can't believe that you're here, that you're on the ship. The ship's not flying any particular colors. That's true. I, I was wondering if we were flying the British flag or not. But, so he goes, uh, Mallory? That's quite right, quite right, old boy. Uh, <laughs> it's a pleasure to see you. Uh, now his uh, Batman steps between you. Some mealy-mouthed little fellow, <laughs> uh, Paul or something like that. Something, something, Paul. Family name, Paul. <laughs> um, anyway, he steps and says, um, Please keep two steps back from Lieutenant Arm Brewster. <laughs> Get that down. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. Uh, 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 I've, I've completely blank on this name. Uh, Sure. So I just ignore him. Uh, no, no, no. The, oh. the, 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 the Batman. The uh, Paul. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, so I say, uh, uh, good to see you. Uh, we've we've set a watch uh, here on shore. We've just had uh, an assassination attempt on uh, uh, Sir St. John Smythe. Um, uh, 
It's a very likely story, but I'll be conducting the investigation now. Please step aside, Mallory. We're going aboard. Oh. Uh, oh. Of course, of course. Uh, you're welcome aboard, but uh, uh, be advised, there are uh, reptile uh, skin-wearing uh, men in the... Uh, Any protestations of insanity or jungle fever will be attested to by <laughs> uh, a magistrate when we get you in court, but uh, just tut tut, carry on. Uh, <laughs> uh, his uniform, you know, his collar is so tight, his face is kind of it's bulging out. Bloated. <laughs> <laughs> with his sunken chest and his, you know, his, but, uh, he's, he's very full of himself now it's like he was your secret enemy all these years and he's fine it it's finally come home to roost yeah but you can barely remember his, his name <laughs> yeah, well I'm, I'm overconfident so it's like yeah that'll be fine yeah, whatever, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So for your casualness in the face of possibly devastating rest, please, sir, have a point of style. Hmm. Yes. All right. So he looks Tanvir up and down, uh, decides not to comment, and, you know, heads right for the gangplank. Or the, you know, the, the galley right up to the, to the top. Isn't this, he interrupts you, you know, isn't this that, that god-awful mistake put together by Neslinger? Uh, well, that's, that's perhaps a harsh characterization of the ship, which did it just... completely did not work. Well, that may have been the case originally, but uh, it has just completed the first transatlantic... Uh, anti-gravity uh, uh, flight uh, in the uh, annals of the Travelers Club. I think at this point Oscar will butt in and say, "I think so." Well, I don't. Th uh, I think your uh, your as assumptions are, are wrong, sir. This machine is in 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 excellent condition and fully functional. I think you're fine. And you are. You can call me uh, Mr. Weingold. Uh, this is uh, Professor Weingold uh, Beauregard. Uh, uh, meet Lieutenant Beauregard uh, 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 Credenza. Uh, of his the Batman uh, once again inserts himself. Lieutenant <laughs> Armbruster Credenza. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Lieutenant Credenza, I can tell you that this machine is in tip-top condition. Yes, you would say that. I'm sure you just assembled it in some warehouse in Belium. Well, Take me to St. John's Mine. Well, okay, come, come with me. Then we'll guide, guide him to the cabin. Please remember the condition of John St. John's Mine. <laughs> he's, he's a bit indisposed. We have, uh, we have uh, our best uh, uh, chemist uh, looking after... <laughs> An antidote for this poison has been struck. Uh, and this is the perfect time to find out about that second batch. Mm. Yes, it is. Okay. Right. Uh, Lawrence, Lawrence has been uh, cooking. <laughs> Lawrence must have one of those huge goggles on, right? <laughs> yeah. oh, big leather smock. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And once again, once again, I got the goggles. I've got the tea, I've got the crumpets, you know, crumbs on the crumbs on the desk, and you know, all the places one with the uh, one with the herbs and what have you. Uh, and the woman is still chained to the chair. In oh the yeah. <laughs> and I'm talking to her the whole time. I'm talking to her the whole time. Yeah. So I figured that out. That's pretty uh, pretty interesting uh, interesting stuff you got there. But I managed to figure that out. We'll have to talk sometime, you and I. Really kind of brilliant what you what you uh, you people have come up with. Really brilliant. And, uh, you know, he's going like, Lawrence, Lawrence, Lawrence. <laughs> sure, Not your better. hands are chained to the chair. <laughs> right, you know, and just, uh, quite, 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 what you have. And he's just ch chatting away with her, kind of friendly, actually. 
uh, but just, you know, chatting along. And so, uh, let's see, I'm going to do biology or chemistry and I and, um, synergize with biology again. Last well, time. before I forget, right. before I forget, let's see about this friendliness and the effect that it has. Mm. Uh, I'm going to assign it a difficulty. I have a mm. difficulty of two because of no actual verbal communication at this mm. point. Right. But double your charisma versus the difficulty right. of two to see if we can, you know, move the meter of her attitude toward you. This is where I'm putting two style. Oh. That's where we're on six days here. We'll see what happens. Right. And triple ace games dice have given me if if she's tough, I got it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Good thing you spent style there. I noticed that you yeah, did. Sure. Yeah. Okay. There was a style die involved with that. All right. Body language. Anyway, as you begin your preparations, it seems like she's relaxing a bit rather than, you know, testing her bonds and, and looking fearful at every, anybody who passes by. She's beginning still with some reserve and awareness, but she's beginning to relax a little bit. I'm crumpet. I'm crumpet. Ooh, hey, hey. <laughs> oh, up to her. Hey, crumpet. I'll break a piece off. You <laughs> oh, well, more for me. Hey, good. All right. Well, Got to get the crumbs off this part here. This probably won't help anyone. hurt the thing. Crumbs, a little, little vegetation. And so... I guess I'm just going to synthesize unless I have any kind of ba um, bonus for having done this once. Sure you can. So or is that canceled chemistry. out by... Chemistry. Synergized by biology. And you're going to be making a, a larger batch. Yeah. Well... Could be useful. Well. Yeah. If somebody gets, idea. gets stuck with another one of those darts again. <laughs> yeah, well, it's more exciting to make it later on. <laughs> That's and, true. I'll make a larger batch. If you make a larger batch, then we can turn it into an extended mm. an extended. Okay. Batch. Right. Okay. Right. So the difficulty is just a one. All right. All right. If you wind up with zero successes, do let me know. Oh, yes, I will, of course. That's uh, three, so two. All right. And you are going for five successes. Each roll will represent 30 minutes. Hmm. Are you? Still ch chatting to her merrily? So the, the, the army goes trooping through the, the hallway outside the lab. Hey, George. Did, uh, did Burke bring more people than I thought? Who are all these folks? Uh, oh, well. Yes, George? So everybody's piling on past him, or uh, is this the, this is the room where we got the lady chained up, not, not where Sinjin's Right, so they're, they're just going down the... So we're just going down the, uh, the, the hallway, yeah. The yeah, hall outside, for, for, yeah. For, you know, like just going past me like a freaking, you know, a procession. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, I think I'll pop, poke my head into, into the room and say, uh, Lawrence, uh, how is the uh, antidote coming? We seem yeah. to be in a bit of a hurry. <laughs> you can't hurry things like this, but it's, it's totally, it's okay. I mean, she's, she's helping. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, okay, okay. Then I'll just pop out and go back to, right. you know, trying to yeah. keep up with, uh, with, Bo uh, with Beauregard, I was going to say, with uh, Credenza, right? Maybe, we have, maybe I can... Uh, Maybe I can I, I can uh, distract Credenza by t talking to him about the the various workings of the uh, the ship and you know give it a try give it give give Lawrence a bit more time to weave his magic. How so, would you like to approach this this social deception? Um, 
Well, I, I'm going to be truthful. I'm just going to talk to him about the engineering because I can't, I can't really, I don't have the skill to con him. So okay. uh, it's, it's, it's all down to actual fact. And, you know, facts can be pretty dull and lengthy in description. <laughs> you know, when we're talking about thrust bearings and, you know, <laughs> wankle oh, rotary engines. <laughs> he's demonstrated that he is, he's brusque. He thinks he's large and in charge. Uh, so you'd be relying on his innate sense of politeness not to interrupt I'm not going to give him a chance. I'm just going to keep talking, like a right. so solid wall of of engineering babble. <laughs> that's, okay. that's my well, plan. Let's give it a try. Um, this comes down to your force of personality. Okay, so um, so is that a charisma role? It would be charisma. If you have diplomacy or intimidation, that would be nice. Nope. <laughs> All right then. <laughs> So, <laughs> literally just you know bluffing and bluffing it and on the you know just going for honest discussion about the, the the mechanics and the engineering of this marvelous machine so here's what here's what i'm going to do let's find out what his initial uh reaction is to you okay he's hostile because of george yeah but he just met you yeah so he's He's predisposed not to like you because you're associating with, with George on this cockamamie airship. <laughs> but let's see how he actually feels about you, because Procter and Gamble seem to you know, love you. Okay. So let's find out. Okay. So double your charisma. Okay. <clears throat> I'll keep his willpower as secret. Yeah. Uh, and demolish your results with it uh, secret. So I'm going to add uh, a little bit of style, just a style point. Okay, so uh, out of those five dice, two res two two successes. Okay. Okay. So it's one of those situations where Oscar's in the lead. And I, I'm kind of imagining like walking backward very slowly, pointing at things. Yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Okay. And you know, uh, the Batman and and the Arm Brewster Credenza, Lieutenant Arm Brewster Credenza, to you, sir, <laughs> um, are are trying to move faster, but you're you know filling the whole the whole passageway. It's just like a naval vessel, right? It's if two people are going to pass each other, they have to you know put their backs to the wall and 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 pass each other sideways, and they're inexplicably for an airship there are um bulkheads you know airlock doors you know with the you know that, that seal to air tightness yeah and so you have to step over the, the lips of those and so there's many opportunities to to block their passage and they get up you know within centimeters <laughs> of you um trying to encourage you to go faster and, uh, but They don't push you aside. They do help propel you backward faster. And there's a lot of, yes, 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 I understand. And, uh, enough of your tomfoolery. And, right. And we arrive at the cabin of John Sinjin Smythe. Right. Of course, his clothes are in complete disarray. He's drenched with sweat. His skin is uh, sallow, you know, very, very pasty um, because of all the, the different trials and tribulations he's been through in the last very short period of time. Possibly had some kind of heart attack and, uh, you know, so doesn't have a lot of blood on his face. His eyes are sunken. And there's no small amount of, of blood on, you know, knuckles and heels and, and of course, his, his neck from the original injury. And so the, the shocked look is, uh, what have you done? I'll, I'll see you in irons for this. He well, just kind of randomly points at the ship. 
<laughs> calm down, Belvedere. Uh, uh, Belvedere. It's, it's, <laughs> I, as I told you, he was uh, attacked. A poison dart struck his neck. We performed uh, immediate care on his wounds. Uh, the poison was. I drew the poison out myself. Uh, Likely story. Well, there's plenty of witnesses uh, on board. They all work for you. <laughs> uh, uh, well, yes, but uh, 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 why, why would we lie? I mean, we just arrived in country, and, uh, uh, well, this is you know, simply preposterous. You, know, <laughs> you save a man's life, and this is the kind of thanks you get. Uh, you don't imperil someone and then save them and expect to be thanked for it. Have you gone mad as the jungle heat boiled your brain, Mallory? Uh, uh, and he looks at Oscar. And, and you, sir, Mr. Weingold, I can tell that you uh, are a very intelligent and well-educated man. How you got involved in this deception is beyond me, but you really need to reconsider your life choices. There's no deception here. This is, uh, we, we were trying to save this man's life. And I think we succeeded. If it wasn't for the quick, quick response of, of our friend Lawrence here, I think he would have died. I will just remind you that anything that you say will be taken <laughs> and uh, recorded to be used against you at trial. Trial. Secure the ship. He's talking. He's talking to, yeah, uh, he's talking to, to his men. You know, secure the ship and you know, see to the uh, bridge. And well, now hold on there a, a, a moment, uh, 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 the credenza. I mean, uh, we can just working on the antidote. Once uh, Sinjin Smythe is on his feet, he can clear this up uh, swiftly. There should be no need for this formality. Well, let's see if Let's see if this is for this formality. Let's see if this line of this line of appeal uh, can work. Are you thinking intimidation or are you thinking diplomacy? It sounded very polite. I was thinking. It sounded. Polite. I was thinking diplomacy. Uh, I don't know how my social. It's minus one. It's, uh, it does the Royal Geographic. It does. It, it applies. Okay, so I, it gives me a plus two. So it's just a plus one with the with the penalty. So I have a diplomacy of three uh, plus one is four, and I'm gonna spend my one and only uh, uh, precious precious uh, style point um, trying to see if there's anything else I can leverage. Uh, but that that seems to be <laughs> it really. So, well, Tanvir Singh is there. Is there anything he could contribute? Oh, uh, uh, the, yeah, we could call him as a, as a Tanvir is here, right? He's a, you, you know, Tanvir, you remember Tanvir. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a man of unimpeachable character. He witnessed the whole affair as well. Yes. <laughs> oh. Uh, <laughs> Two extra dice from that brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I completely, I completely concur with the with what George. Said. <laughs> uh, and to help, to yeah. help even further, if the astute oh. among the military might look down the hall and see a door just cracked open just a little bit with a pair of eyes, <laughs> with the uh, as as as, as, uh, as Proctor just looks out <laughs> to see what might be happening. <laughs> and, and swiftly slams the door shut. <laughs> All right. So make it happen. Here we go. Ah, there we go. Look, the, we were making fun of Tanvir, man. That's two successes from Tanvir's help. <laughs> so, uh, and two more is four successes. That's pretty good. Four successes. <laughs> All right. This gives you an unspecified amount of extra successes. So digging into Mallory's intentions, do you hope to reach through the fog of anger to maybe 
improve his outlook towards you? Or are you looking simply to be able to retain control of the situation? I think control of the situation is more important because we okay. don't want to get arrested and we need to continue with our mission. So, you know, if, yeah. if, we, can, if we can get this situation resolved quickly, and I don't really care if he likes me or not. I think that, that I think that boat sails. Because you know, it, it'll be fine either way. You know, who cares? <laughs> what's what's one more jail? <laughs> so, uh, with that, then uh, we will translate that into, you know, he's there with a small troop of soldiers. It's more than adequate to do what it needs to do. You know, patrolling through the jungle, making sure that, um, you know wild animals aren't threatening uh, civilized areas and, and that people who are lost can be found. But uh, if your whole crew kind of rallies around you uh, in this kind of environment, it doesn't, it doesn't bode well for them. And we'll personify this in the arrival of Edmund Burke. Mm. Yeah. Physically powerful, um, another man with military bearing and, um, and uh, you know, membership in different, it comes from different social circles and, and was in a different branch of service, but um, still, him taking your side takes a lot of the wind out of Credenza's sails, and he, he has to shift from the moral high ground and kind of steamrollering uh, his own truth onto the onto the scene, and now he ends up having to justify his actions because of the the look of the man, you know, who who steps in, you know, between Oscar and and Mallory. It's like, what's going on here? You know, what is all this noise? Clearly, this man needs rest. He's been through a life and death situation, attacked from men from the jungle. Haven't you been listening to Mallory here? What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> that kind of situation. And in the background, there are birds chirping. <laughs> yes. Yep. So, this will advance a little bit. We get back down on the beach for parlay. Right? He wants to seize the epiphany. He wants everyone to go into Berlin uh, to stand before uh, a local magistrate approved by uh, the embassy. You're here without permission. You didn't make contact with uh, the local government. Um, what do you think you're doing? You know, you're just treasure hunters or treasure seekers. There have been unexplained deaths, possibly of, of citizens. You know, he's he's coming up with charges the more he thinks, he thinks about it. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> And your counter offer. While you're thinking, let's go back to the lab for the second life saving roll. All you need is three successes, which means you need to roll four. Oh. Okay. Ah. <laughs> get one. You got one, which means, oh, you got one after the reduction? Um. Uh, no, I got one. Ah, which means zero. So we wipe away the existing <laughs> successes. On triple A's games, nice. <laughs> Poor workman who blames the tools. Just yeah, roll them. Exactly. <laughs> um, yes. I did. Somehow, your workbench has become contaminated. Crumpet crumbs everywhere. <laughs> the crumpets. <laughs> spilled, spilled, it was bad. Spilled the tea, the tea, tea the spilled tea up because I'm, guess I'm so exhausted. Oh. Diluted. <laughs> the, uh, the 
I look at her smile. So, well, sometimes you just have to start all over again and just dash everything off the desk <laughs> entirely and, and give her, give her a, a winning smile and start over again. Oh. Could all I right. get a perception check from Lawrence Flee? Right. I will do that. Now, perception. Perception! Well, he's pretty perceptive. I mean, I mean, both I know this is an opposed role, but I will once again play it close to my my vest. Mm. What it is that you are opposing? Well, I'm not gonna say what I get. <laughs> <laughs> then you automatically do it. That's a one on six dice. Again, I'm, I'm using this for different dice. <laughs> Maybe I'm the localized very, gravity in, in your location is messing yeah. with your dice. I'm paying very close attention to this, and I'm just, you know, very tired. Okay, so you're still having your conversation with her. You know, you're, you're, you're swiping stuff off the desk. You throw out the, the batch, and it's around then that you realize that the chair is empty and she is gone. Uh-oh. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh. It may have been a while because the, the the manacles with which she was secured to the chair, they're not swinging or anything, or, you know, it's just it's totally still and peaceful. <laughs> well, stay, look at it out, we'll look for, we'll look for. So I drop everything down, stop making the note, and just start to search, to search the ship for her. Okay. It's only been an hour of your life. Okay. Search the ship. Meanwhile, down on the beach, this, you know, this uneasy conference is, uh, is going on. But you have, you have some advantages because he has left the ship, right? going to where he feels uh, more in control. All right. Searching the ship. Are you going to recruit some assistance or any of those like things? Or are you just going oh, to of course. Of course, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Knocking the doors and at least at least get uh, at least get Gamble Johnson out. If Proctor won't leave the room, uh, see who else I can rustle up in the ship. You know, and we grab Grover. Yeah. You know, have him, have right. So him you. Him. Grover and <laughs> Gamble, and Gamble and Johnson yeah. are okay. searching the ship. <laughs> Come on, fellas. That's we gotta find her. <laughs> yeah, we got to do this because George is gonna kill me if I if I lose her. But you know, easy come, easy go. But we should be able to find her around here somewhere. Oh, oh dear. Uh, uh, well, uh, of course we need to find her, Mr. Garibaldi. Uh, I'll get some weapons and perhaps we should send word to Mr. Singh uh, to join us and he steps momentarily back into his cabin and emerges with his umbrella once more uh, in hand and, and says, uh, 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 Proctor, uh, find uh, uh, Mr. Singh and, and send him over. Uh, we have need of his assistance. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, have, have, Proctor, why don't you go tell Bill George and, and and Oscar, what's going on too? I don't want to seem like I'm just keeping all this to myself. Grover's going to grab the um, the toasting fork from the crumpets. Just. <laughs> all right. Uh, did you notice, sir, if um, if uh, the woman uh, took her possessions with her, or are those secure? Oh, uh, possessions? Um, no. Possessions. If she the did. possessions are still there, oh. except oh. for the spear. Oh, okay. okay. Well, it's better than the blowgun. <laughs> 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 oh, that, that's, that's possible, Gamble, but you know, it's a good chance they coded that with the same neurotoxin. You never know. Uh, oh. Don't let her hit you with it. And well. she's crafty. <laughs> I think she could give Flynn a run for his money. She's one tough woman. I suppose it's for the best that we've sent Johnson down to the <laughs> down to the shore. All right, so he's he's going down. You know, the the, the gangplank, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, reaches the beach, and uh, our stalwart band of 
of Lawrence and Grover, fork in hand. They're making their way across the deck and up on top where the elder lizard person uh, had been is where you spot her. Uh, and so when Proctor reaches the beach and you know politely interrupts, everyone can you know cast their gaze at the epiphany and see her up on the superstructure right here next to the stacks, right? Uh, doing the same motion of you know driving the spear uh, you know with real force. You remember she was although small, she was really strong, very fit, obviously lived uh, a very healthy and uh, active athletic. lifestyle. Yeah. yeah, very athletic lifestyle. But just, just driving it with, with all of her leverage into the, the armor plating of the, of the roof of the Epiphany. And letting out the same ovulating scream. I got it. Oscar was right. They're trying to kill the ship. They need to know that. Listen, keep an eye on her, fellas. I think I know what to do. So okay. Running back, running back to the to the to the to the room with the batteries. I think I've got an idea. Okay. And you know, I guess uh, Gamble at this point starts trying to address her from down in our position, right? It's like, Madam. Uh, please, uh, uh, the ship is no threat to you. And, you know, he starts going off on a description of, you know, why it's futile to uh, try to kill the ship, right? So I take it that, uh, that, that Crescendo sees all this as well. Credenza? Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> if you could call it Crescendo, that would be even better. <laughs> All right, Oscar. <laughs> he's he's steadfastly looking down the beach with his back to the epiphany. <clears throat> he's that guy. I'll tap on his shoulder. Uh, crescendo, my dear chap. Look, you, you can, yeah, so Lieutenant Crescendo. Well, um, if you look, you can see you can see the uh, the. the the, the attacker, the, the Smythe's attacker. Uh, uh, point to right. Uh, point likely story. Just look at the ships, man. Look at the ship, man. <laughs> well, it's probably about that time that I get to the room with the batteries. And so my yep. intention is to cut the power to the anti-grav thing. <laughs> start oh. to start to go down. Because I want to try to t make her think that she's killed the ship. Uh, okay, that's cool. I like that. But I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this slowly. I don't want. I don't want to just slam into the ground. But I want to slowly, you know. At least that's my intention. Well, I'm very excited that you've chosen this as an option, actually, because remember the the, the two fears that Neslinger pointed out was either that you crash into the Earth, or that you leave orbit. Oh. And either one of those could be the outcome of, <laughs> of uh, this process. Yeah. So the shutdown process is very complicated. Okay. It has a associated difficulty of four. Excellent. Rolling no successes, meaning all blanks on the dice. However, I know that's very unlikely. Um, is going to be tragically bad for you and everybody on the ship. <laughs> merely one. failing, okay. merely failing is going to be dramatically bad. Uh, success will allow you to fake killing the ship. Okay, good. Good. All right, then. Uh, so no pressure. What, what am I going to use to do this? That's the question. No? Well, this is chemistry. It's definitely chemistry. All right. To rebalance the assets oh. in the battery or something. All right, I am gonna seek. I'm gonna seek assistance from one of the pilots of the ship, one of the alternate pilots, who's just gonna give me a hand as far as control wise. So. Okay, that will lend 
two dice and and give us a uh, a, a preference for downward movement. Right. Yeah. So, so it's got one of those tubes where you like flip a cover, right, and speak into the tube and the pilot up there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Communication yeah. chief. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. All right, all right. Uh, you know, Leopold, uh, let her down slowly. Let her down slowly. I'm going to start to cut the power. i got to make this look convincing. So I'm going to use my last style. Well, oh. uh, I'm going to interrupt you there before you make that happen. Uh, let's see if... You know, the, the captain bows to your will. This is an intimidation check for giving orders. Uh, okay. Well, you're basically uh, saying, hey, we need to crash the ship. And the captain's like, mm -hmm. okay, good. All right, cool, cool. That well, that's a fact, good. Well, that's, that's, that's just double charisma because I've got no intimidation. Or am I just doing, I got no intimidation. It's, it's your charisma minus two dice. Ah, but you are. Are you not um, a jack of all trades? I am a jack of all trades. Ah, that's right. So it's your flat charisma. Flat charisma. Okay. That's, that's useful. That's and useful. I wonder. I wonder what the. I wonder what the difficulty is. Do we know? The difficulty. Yeah. No, it's yeah. against his his willpower, my son, and I'm keeping that here in my pocket. Make <laughs> Captain do of the ship. You can do two style and get extra. No, no, no. I'm can't save one for the entire scene. Uh, so sure. no matter what you do, well, as long as it's a. I don't have two style. Hmm. Mm. Do I use chance dice? Yeah, probably not. Mm. <laughs> yeah, two style to get a, a a bonus from the the higher level of jack of all trades is pretty yeah. handy for the whole scene. Yeah, but I do not have two style because I use them well. to. To uh, to try to to um, yeah. try to uh, you did. Get, get, yeah I did well I got a one the average all right one. then so you <laughs> have found yourself an argument so you're screaming up the tube the captain's yelling down the tube <laughs> yeah man we don't have time we're all going to well we're all going to die if we don't do this. We don't want to try to plummet the ship into the earth. Correct. His counter-argument is, why? Because this, <laughs> because this, this young woman is going to break something on the ship, important to its function. We have to stop and, her. But she's a valuable asset. You, you faintly hear him sending people to engineering to see what's going, going on. There's another ululating cry. You can barely hear it. Right? On the beach, it's it's louder because it's not you know going through all these 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 many decks. So she's once again reached it up. She slammed it, and the time it's taken him to get down into engineering. She's performed this motion four Multiple times. times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then the spear goes up over her head. She spins it around, slams it down again unleashes this huge cry and this time there's a response uh -oh. from the jungle oh no uh. and so it's the same cry but coming from the jungle now and much larger what sort of sound is it uh oh is it the same kind of the same kind of warbling okay um, but much note. bigger does but it much bigger does it, and you yes does it sound human like it's a <laughs> bunch of people repeating the cry or does it sound like it's a beast <laughs> making a similar cry to the sadly sadly the latter not the <laughs> oh, okay. you hear it <laughs> before you see it the oh. <laughs> flap Flap, and the afternoon goes dark as a diamond-like shape crosses the sun for a moment, blotting it out like a cloud. And those of you who are looking down in the moment, you know, see this long double wedge shape shadow drift across the beach and out over the ocean, and then everyone sees this this bat-winged monster's shape as it arcs out. 
and flares its giant claws to come in to attack the epiphan. Oh. With, its, with its long pointed beak or bill drawn back much like the spear the woman is wielding and she has her arms up in the air in triumph. Oh, so I, you know, uh, George sees this and, and, and screams, uh, you know, for God's sake, Eustace, uh, do, do you not see? Uh, <laughs> quickly, uh, up the ramp, uh, down here, and I run off uh, up the ramp to, to, to Luke, the ship, Luke. trying to get back on board. Crush, crushing, look. <laughs> Dr. Crusher. <laughs> So, Lieutenant Arm Brewster Credenza is standing there in shock. The Batman turns to the troop and yells, Ready, men! Arms! Right? And so, you know, they're bringing their, their rifles down off their, off their arms and, and readying around in the chamber and bringing them up to fire, which of course is more than enough time for the impact. How, how many men are there in that troop? Eight. Eight. Okay. And they do not look well well drilled or well trained. Maybe at one time they were, but under the you know unerring guidance of Lieutenant Credenza, they have... Uh, Hailed. Okay. All right. So Tanvir and Mallory are on the gangway. Yeah, running up the deck trying to get to my gun so that sure. I can shoot. And I'm screaming to Burke as well, too. There's your dinosaur, Burke. Get it. Shoot it. Right. <laughs> Burke likewise is on the beach. He's down there without the His big weapon. guns. You know, he's just yeah. down there with, with sidearms. Um, but his, his Batman is, of course, carrying the big gun because that's all he does. But they, it's going to take them a while to get it, to get it in motion. Uh, okay, so the, the impact, the huge creature lands, claws extended, right, on top of the Epiphany and then attempts to drive its, cool. its bill, its beak, its pointed uh, proboscis. Uh, and you can see, you know, splintering fangs down the down the length of it into the into the armor plate. All right. Okay. Okay. Initiative. <laughs> In the meantime, I'm screaming at this guy that may have just showed up. Don't can't you see? We've got to put, crash this thing in the earth to make sure you, you make her think she killed the ship. She just did kill the ship. The right, the whole ship, the, the the whole ship shudders. And I need athletics. Everybody in engineering needs to make an athletics check. Uh, or yes. fall. Oh, yeah, all right. Woo! Something I'm good at. <laughs> yeah. So, I got four initiative. Four. Right, two. two. You're rolling initiative two? Yep. Okay, well, let me, let me do athletics first, because that will probably affect something. But, uh, so athletics is going to be... Uh, oh, wait. And, yeah, four. That's good. That's splendid. Okay. Initiative is, is more of a... Four. Okay. Redemption for Triple H Games Dice. <laughs> All right. Now, in, in engineering, of course, you have no idea of the arrival of, of the creature. And so initiative for you starts when it hits the deck. Uh, so we need athletics checks for you guys to remain on your feet. On the, right. on you the have ramp. You have to beat huh. its attack roll. On the ramp... There's extra play. Uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to uh, increase the value of its attack roll for you to beat. Uh, okay. Uh, 
representative of that. Okay, if you do not get more successes than its attack, um, if you're inside the ship, you'll be thrown to the deck. If you're on the gangplank or up on an outer deck, you're going to be thrown potentially to the beach below. And we'll determine that by how badly uh, you don't beat the attack roll. So, dice please. Could I, for athletics. Could I lobby for a style point for my I'm daring give over you, I've, confident? I've totally <laughs> forgot. Uh, you're running right into the face of danger's two style points yes. for you. Okay. Um, and the ridiculous plan <laughs> one style point for our chemist. <laughs> and it out, but it was a great plan. Thrusting to science to bring truth. One style point for Oscar Weingold as well in his attempts to prevent the the, uh, the onslaught of you know Brigadier General Armbruster. <laughs> <laughs> Crescendo. Uh, uh, <laughs> since we don't have, uh, we don't know the, the target number, right? That is correct. I just need to know how okay. many successes you managed to generate on an athletics check. So, in hopes of avoiding a fall, I will spend one of those style points to help me navigate the perilous situation. Oh, jeez. Oh, no, 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 it's not bad. Three, three successes. It's not bad. Three successes. It'd be hard to knock me off my feet. Ooh, four successes. Lovely. Oscar's still on the beach. Yes, yes. So I did, <laughs> I did, Safely on the beach. I didn't roll. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Excellent. The ship shivers with the impact. Remember, it was... Uh, a few meters off off the beach. It's driven quite close to, to impact. In fact, maybe you hear a splash down uh, toward the, the rear of the ship as, you know, as it slaps the surface of the ocean, which has George with one hand on the railing inverted for a moment. Right, as his feet completely leave the, the gangplank, he's being pulled <laughs> down by the ship. Right? And then the ship stops. And then gravity reasserts itself, and he is slammed. Right? Still able to uh, be on the gangplank, but you know, you're rolling down uh, the, the swaying uh, rope supported uh, wooden structure. In the engineering chamber, Lawrence is not falling into the batteries. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. You know what they had happened last time when they fell into the batteries. All right. Now, George, you take three non-lethal wounds, two non-lethal for Lawrence as you're slammed into the deck by the force of this thing. Ouch. Oh, ouch. Well, I'm going to back. But yeah, that's good. But, but I will, um, I will, um, I will roll. I will roll. You do need to roll. Mitigate. Oh, I see you're going to use the, the style roll to, 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 to wipe to, to mitigate, to, to mitigate. Well, at least one. I think it's yeah. non-lethal still sort of works through one. the minute, so. Yeah. But this takes you to minus one, if my memory serves. This is correct. This is correct. Requiring a willpower roll to stay conscious against the the battery and fatigue. So that okay. Will willpower. That's correct. Uh, okay. Am I doing a minus one at that exact moment as well, or no? Yep. Okay. So then that's that's just five dice then. Uh, yes. All right. <laughs> that would be one success. <laughs> On five dice. It happens. Okay. So all the all the tools and un everything unsecured in engineering apparently is rolling around with 
rolling around with you, and you know, you're, you're, you're prone on your back, and uh, you know, the, the, the green slime inside the batteries is, is sloshing, and there's sparks, and there's this huge blue discharge, which, you know, <laughs> bounces across the, the copper lining of the ceiling, and, and uh, sears the, uh, the, the nicely sketched uh, pin-up calendar that was on the wall of the, the, the workbench just erupts into flame, which is probably good for your, your moral rectitude anyway. Right. On the beach, of course, you can see all of this, right? And uh, the, the ship shaking, uh, you know, the, the lookouts falling, a couple of guys being tossed off the, the deck, um, an expletive from the kitchen, even though it's coming through locked <laughs> doors, <laughs> it's still... <laughs> Mad. In a sense, yeah, I was going to say, the expletive. Mad. <laughs> Jean-Claude in the kitchen with a souffle. He's just taking it out of, of the oven. <laughs> the ship gets slammed. Is it a law? Yeah, it's in the middle of just, like, collapsing. <laughs> Smashing it against the wall. So I'm on the other side, aren't I? With one success... We'll come back to you. <laughs> yeah, go. Um, Eloy, for George, he's still doing all right, I think. Yeah, he's he's got two two hit points, two positive, right? He's, right, two health, two. He started with right. five, so he started three, so he's down to two. Yeah. Right. Um. So, uh, the, the thing is collapsing, but there's ropes. And, and, and stuff around. So he, I grab onto the ropes and start making my way up, sort of like half rappelling down the up the uh, up the bulkhead and half, you know, climbing on top of the uh, portions of the walkway and and trying to climb as swiftly as I can to get on right. top of the deck. All right, this uh, we can represent by athletics. Yes. If you don't have athletics, then double your strength will do. Yes, I have athletics, and, uh... Do you, uh, when you doubled your, uh, primary attributes, do you, do you apply the, the minus two? Uh, you can't use, uh, the double attribute role for a situation where a skill exists. So, if there were a skill, then you'd only be using, a uh, single attribute with the minus two penalty, so it's quite steep. It's a strong encouragement to stay in genre focus. Um, there are some skills that dovetail with a double attribute role, such as athletics. Yeah. And when your athletics uh, reaches a point where you have more dice in it than double your attribute, then you just replace it and you never have to do the, yeah. the double attribute role. You can just use athletics or whatever. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's that situation. Okay. Cool. So right. I I will do so stylishly as I, you know, I think Whoa. it's pretty daring uh, going up those ropes and sort of half rappelling and half uh, moving up. And that is a good roll. Yes. That is one, two, three, four, five, six successes and seven nice. dice. That Excellent. So you make it up to the deck. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so one deck above you is the creature. Its its wings are extended to either side of of the ship, right? So just past the railing on either side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's you know its body is immense, and you know it's rearing its head back for another step, much like a crane or uh, or a, a kite would stab at fish in a river. So, question, uh, it's, is there accessibility to the staterooms via the deck that I'm standing on? So, sure, such sure, sure. that I could get my yeah. gun or... Absolutely. I just thought you might want to, you know, climb up the the wing of the creature, and, and I didn't want you to 
<laughs> feel deprived, <laughs> deprived of, that, of uh, that opportunity. Yes, yes. Right. I appreciate yeah. Much appreciated. <laughs> uh, uh, see, I need to get its attention, but I don't know how to do that. I have a wild idea of how to do it, but I figure it's better if I have a... Uh, <laughs> Something to threaten it with, right? I've got I, an idea. I want. To, can I do something? Well, so what do you what are you gonna do? You gotta go to the stateroom because uh, that will be another turn. Or you know what? I'm I'm gonna go with a stupid plan because it's League of Adventures, right? If you <laughs> want to shoot it, we'll do something else. But in League of Adventure, we do the pulpy thing. So I start uh, screaming at it, and I. I pick off my fifth helmet, I throw it at it, and I start, you know, maneuvering sideways around the deck and trying to scream and wave my arms and see if I can get to the, its attention. Two style points. Oscar. So, um, I can see the, the this creature ripping bits of my ship apart, so... Yeah, yeah. So, obviously, yeah, I'm, I'm mortified. So, I'm going to... My plan is I want to run on, sh on board and operate the steam crane to swing oh. to swing yes. to swing the the, uh, <laughs> the the sort of the the big uh, crane across and try and whack it off the ship yeah <laughs> <laughs> and right. i kind of imagine a big gra grappling kind of arm on right, it the crane machine yeah <laughs> and just kind of oh, cool. You know, operating the levers and uh, <laughs> swinging it around. Yeah. Well, just like George, you have to nav navigate the the gangplank, right? And, okay. Uh, right now, the ship is is stable. Yeah. Um, so, uh, who knows how... what it'll be like, uh, but later. Okay. Well, I, I'm going to take my chance now. It's stable enough. I'm going to I'm okay. going to run as fast as my uh, my uh, your yeah, move will it, allow. I'd like you yeah. to roll your move dice, sir. Yeah, so I've got five. All right. So this is uh, eight successes would get you to the top in a turn. Oh, that's, that's going to be tricky. Uh, uh, I'm going to have to spend, spend two of my Precious. Precious style point to bump it a little bit. Right. Oh, fuck. Ah, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, darn it. Fuck, <laughs> who uh, so Heavens. Can <laughs> uh, It's all blank except for one. One well, success. <laughs> Stupid okay. bloody well, dice. That clearly tells me... <laughs> that the creature is following George's lure. Okay. And it's it's hopping, right? It's very ungainly on the ground, this creature. Its wings extend all the way down to its ankles, you know, and these heavily clawed feet. So it is hopping its way, so right? My intent. It's right in front of the stacks. <laughs> Yeah, my intent, so, so you can plan what happens, is to <laughs> circle around the railing, right, of the deck, and make my way to the ocean-facing side of the ship, right, because I just came up from shore, I want yep. to go around until I'm <laughs> by the edge of the ship, right, uh, 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 make yeah, it so to the, 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 the gangplank comes up here, mm -hmm. right, but on the other side, we're on mm -hmm. the, we're on the far side. And so the the creature is just in front of this stack. In fact, this stack, it sadly, is no more. And this stack has been decapitated, and that stack is leaning at a crazy angle. angle. And this structure, which is probably really important, Oscar would be able to tell you, it's this really has important. been pierced. Yeah. This, this structure has been pierced. And so you want to get to the rear right to the to the stern of the vessel so it has to turn around so in its ungainly flapping fashion right mm -hmm. it demolishes this stack oh boy right now remember you know the, the the stacks are 
they serve a, a different function than channeling, you know, coal smoke because we have the the carbolic electrofluidic uh, battery arrangement. Uh, but they are, uh, you know, essential. They're not there for aesthetics, right? So it's it's shearing through them. So the, the air is full of the, the sound of ripping and grinding metal. The armor plates are are buckling under its claws, and as it turns around, the ship tilts one way, the unconscious body of Lawrence goes rolling across uh -huh. the, uh, the floor, bowling over the two guards that were, were there to, to arrest him, or you know, at least r restrain him. More sloshing, more electrical discharge. We see a bolt of lightning come shooting out the back by the, 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 the vertical uh, ducted fans. <laughs> Whew, it's exciting. Oh, yes. Yeah. I like, I like it. So, as a result of all of this movement, the gangplank, which looked stable, is just flinging itself from side to side, and so poor Oscar is just at the end hanging on to the, the, the ropes for, for dear life, only having taken a, you know, a, a brief step, like a one meter toward his, his goal. Yeah. Lords, all this slamming you around, Maybe this will jostle you awake. Please make a willpower roll. All right. And I'm still at negative one, right? You're still at negative one on the willpower Good. roll. That is correct. Good. Thank goodness. Okay, I've, I've got two successes this time. All right. So you are you doubled your conscious. Prison. You are conscious. conscious at minus one to everything that you do. And you can choose one of the three action types that you are normally allowed. Right, so you can move or attack or defend. Very groggy, in other words. I, yeah, I get it. Oh, and then everything's shaking, everything's you know, falling down. We don't want to go down, we want to go up. And so, Something interesting said, is happening to the batteries. Yeah, they're slashing. Discharging. Yeah, and creating far more energy than you have witnessed before. Normally, they're kept stable, and they generate a nice even flow. But this this weird kind of rhythmic side-to-side -side sloshing is exciting the chemicals in some way. And the energy production is off the chart, literally off the chart. Hmm. Parts of the array are beginning to melt. Let you think about how you want to deal with that in a moment. Oscar. Yeah. yeah continuing my plan. All right. So Move. You've got one success already. He said I needed eight. Yeah, because I'm a terrible, vile human being. Because <laughs> you're evil. Uh, so I've doubled my result. Uh, two more successes. Woo, three, only five left. So you're you're making your way up. Yes. It's still it's still beginning to, to, to rock and now of course the, the epiphany is beginning to cant. Yeah. Stern is starting to, to drag downward as it's it's you know, we're past the center of gravity. George, you have its undivided attention. Yes. <laughs> and I'm sorry, you're just large enough to be prey size. Yeah. A snack. I, I understand. <laughs> But you have the initiative over yeah. it. But it's two eyes on you know its wedge-shaped head. You know you can see them; they operate independently, right? And you can see them focusing on you. Yes. So, hopefully by this time I've made my way around the ship to where I am close to the where I'm over the water. So to speak. Right, you're at the you're at the stern of the ship. It's followed you down the length yeah. of the, the ship, which has caused Oscar to, to be thrown left right. and right, right, caused Lawrence to be rolled left and right, and the batteries to be sloshed left and right. Yeah, so I'm 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 screaming at people to you know Tanvir and Burke and uh, Tanvir's Tanvir's not that far <clears throat> ahead of Oscar. Yeah, yeah, but I'm you know I'm shouting orders basically right. or you know that's not orders it's common sense or is it somebody shoot it get the gun shoot it shoot it's it off been the ship. Well, enough I, turns that burke has his, his elephant weapon. gun yeah yeah 
And what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand right next to the railing and wave it off and wait until it attacks me to dive off the ship into the water. That is my master okay. plan. Because, okay, you know, you're going to delay your be, action. It'll be fine, right? You'll be fine. Two style for this, <laughs> this potentially character ending action. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need your defense roll. You have your full defense. Okay. Um, yeah. Even if you were wearing armor, I would be tempted to discount it, but... Uh, um, don't worry about that. No armor. It's too hot for armor. What are you it's too hot for armor, right? You've, you've, you've just been out of the jungle, right? You've got your, you know, your, your shirt collar uh, open like some kind of working person. So under the assumption oh. that if I survive this, I get to make an athletics roll to... You know, not die dive. from fall. Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to save a little bit of style for that roll, and I'm going to spend two style to boost my defense. You know, which um, might not be sure. the wisest plan, but, <laughs> you know, I might wow, just. yours to spend. Yeah. Uh, full defense. Yeah, full defense is not that big a number. So <laughs> Remember, you can spend style on, on defense. It's totally fine. Mm. Use See, all the, the style, you're gonna die. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I'm kind of thinking. Maybe I should just blow all the style on I'm gonna blow all the style on the defense. Four points on defense on top of whatever I have, so because it's What do you have out of curiosity so I know four. how it's to be four. You have four for or defense. defense. That's the full defense, right? And so eight dice, right? body and wow. Body is two, and uh, what's the other stat? Dexterity is two as well. So oh, willpower. Oh, defense. Yeah. Okay, that's why I thought yeah. not so I'm gonna. I'm, yeah, yeah right. so I'm gonna go with the eight dice. Just yeah, yeah, I would too. <laughs> uh, one, two, three, four, five successes, and. Three of those styles didn't actually do much, but... <laughs> but one did? It's, it's, it, one did. It's better to have it, you know. So. <sighs> okay. <laughs> okay. At the last minute, right? Yeah. It flares its wings, right? And it grips its claws on the very end of the superstructure, you know, causing it to, to crumble <laughs> beneath its claws. It's, it's, it's pulled its, its head all the way back its eyes triangulate your position it opens its beak just the smallest amount revealing the rows of, of hard teeth it shoots out and demolishes the the railing the the bare flagpole goes snapping off and sailing into the into the ocean but george Tell us about this awesome dive you're making into the sea as you make your athletics check completely yeah, so, unscathed. So I'm, <laughs> I'm standing on the rail by this point because I've been walking backward until I sort of like put my feet up right and, and, and still facing the thing and, and, and waving my hands. And as when I see the thing, I just jump backwards, you know, arms spread <laughs> one time nice. backwards and then just like... Uh, put my hands in front of me and, and, and dive into the water. <laughs> what is his athletics? Uh, it is a six. Ooh, oh, well, crazy. then take the average, man. Just yes, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a beautiful silent dive. Yes. Okay. Oscar. Yeah, here we go. It's just blown apart the back of the ship. I know. Can't um, um, being right next to you is shouting in Persian. Uh, I, I'm, you can do it. I'm mortified. Two extra dice from Tanvir's inspiration. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's a beautiful roll. Let's see. <laughs> Want to play games dice, too, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> that's, uh, that was six successes. Six successes. Ooh. Fantastic. So. You are not only up on the deck, but you're at the controls for the crane machine. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I want to, uh, uh, yeah, pull the levers, get this thing rolling, and extend the boom arm of the crane, as, and and 
yeah, start swinging it at this creature. Right. So. so its attention has been focused way at the other end of the ship, right? It's beyond the reach of the crane. But as I mean, if you imagine the view from the beach, right? They're down at the the nose, you know, the, the bow of the ship. What just happened to George is invisible. Yeah. Until he hits the water, right? So they hear him screaming, yelling, and then there's silence, and the back of the ship blows apart, right? So Burke unloads, boom, the shot from the elephant gun. Does it have an effect? Does he hit it? Does he miss it? Who knows? But it turns around, <clears throat> right? The batteries slosh. Lawrence goes for another trip to the other side of engineering, right? Tools, wrenches. Who knows what? Nuts and bolts go sliding with them. No. Alpha and beta and gamma and delta are like, oh my, as they go sliding. <laughs> <laughs> right? uh, gamma manages to grab on to uh, a physical support, and he's just kind of hanging there and saying, danger. Danger, Mr. Garibaldi. <laughs> and, all right, so the bird, uh, not the bird, the, the creature turns around and is now charging whatever that noise was at the front. You know, it's, it's hopping forward, it's extending uh, its wings out, and it, it's, it's looking as this huge kind of bony sail off the, the back of its head. And there you are with the, the crane swinging around. Okay. Oscar, you have won being its next target. <laughs> yeah. Before I forget, two style points for uh, that beautiful dive and successful lure. And also before I forget, the batteries and their state of excitement. Right. What are you going to do about it, oh, stunned one? <sighs> There's only one thing to do. The whole thing, is this, this whole array is going to blow. I've got to discharge as much power as I possibly can. So I'm pulling the levers to discharge as much of the battery power into, like, every system I can take in, including, of course, the paint. Including sorry, the paint. The paint. Well, I'm sorry, guys. But like, <laughs> I think at this point, the most imminent danger is that these batteries are going to explode and destroy the entire ship. And myself. Fantastic. It's Fantastic. got to get discharged, yeah. We're going to treat this as an attack on the creature. This is a potentially self-destructive effort, but I kind of like it. I'm going to give you two style for it. Woohoo! Um, so you're going to roll your chemistry as an attack. Okay. We got to look. successes are going to translate into damage, but they're also going to be damage to the ship systems. We have to look at the positive aspect of this attempt. You know, if it backfires, we'll still set a traveler society record for <laughs> altitude. And, right. you know, so it's you true. Know, let's keep a positive outlook on this. Yes. Yeah. You're not the first group to set fire to their ship when they reach the new lane. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> All right. Okay, but we're going to do the crane first. Okay. Okay. Crane. So, uh, yeah, so I'm going to uh, try and use the grappling arms to swing and, and, and maybe try and grab its head. Uh, right. Engineering. Engineering role. As an attack. Interesting. Okay. So I have eight dice. Here we go. Uh, five successes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, please describe what the attack looks like the creature is injured by it. So, uh, first of all, I kind of swing at full uh, velocity the arm, 
uh, and and then I sort of throw it a, a break on that, and the 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 kind of grappling I uh, end kind of swings round and smacks into the side of the the head of the creature, and then with deft control, I open up the uh, the 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 the, uh, the, uh, the claw. That's the word, the claw, and uh, grab hold of it and try right. and wrestle it. Okay, so we haven't generated enough damage to get submission, no. but you do have a hold. I'm trying right. to keep it in check. All right. Attack with the discharge. Oh. oh. Yeah, okay. I use both my style in this and just yell again, pull the lever, pull that lever. <laughs> we'll see if I can get any kind of assistance. Otherwise, it's just a show. From who wants, who, who do you want to help you? Gamma. I mean, he's just sitting there, he's holding on the rail. He's on the rail saying, danger, danger. Okay. okay. You'll allow this? Gamma, Gamma will assist, yes. Yay! All right, cool. <laughs> Morning. Morning, Mr. Baldi. All right, that is excellent. That is five. That would be very hard, very hard to defend against. Okay. It's a good thing you're in the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a good thing that Oscar is on the deck and not yeah. on the gangplank. Uh, or yes. The gangway. That occurred to me. <laughs> <laughs> Blue lightning dances across every painted surface, every armored surface of the ship. The windows of the bridge blow out. Tanvir screams in pain as he is seared on the side of the of the ship. Because you know he's he stopped to, to help Oscar get get past. Right? Sorry, old boy. <laughs> <laughs> The, the bird throws, or the, the, the creature throws its head back in, in agony, you know, and, and blue lightning is dancing down its, down its teeth. Its eyes are, are rolling wildly. And uh, the woman with the spear uh, is, you know, caught in it, and she's, she's gyrating wildly as she is being electrocuted. And she was already in pretty rough shape. She collapses. Uh, to the, the top of the superstructure and then slides off to fall to the deck. All right. The creature wants to, you know, flap and fly away to get away from the pain, which is all around it, but it can't because it's gripped by the crane. But the ship, which is not being controlled by anyone or anything, is being pulled, right, with it. And it's starting to capsize as the creature is starting to fall into the ocean. And at this moment, the body of John Sinjin Smythe comes hurtling out of the porthole. <laughs> <laughs> and the curtain will close on this episode of The Sky is No Limit. <laughs> Ah, that's awesome. <laughs> that's Why he gets he gets, dies in uh, every yeah, he gets the, the final the final shot, isn't he? <laughs> oh man! Uh, <laughs> gentlemen, you get one point for showing up for today's yeah, debacle. Yes. And uh, peril, yes, there is peril. There is danger. Uh, your characters have been tested. Some of them have been sorely wounded. Uh, some important experiences there. And I guess up for grabs, we have the opportunity for you know, the wisdom point or the learning point. Um, we're still in the same exact situation we were last week, so I'm not going to put the success point up on the table. But um, I'll throw it out for the opportunity to have learned something or put a, a puzzle piece together as the player or you think the characters put something together it's, it's pretty broad 
Well, we, 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 we certainly now discovered that there's dinosaurs. That, Challenger's that, right, yes. Challenger was right. That's a big piece of the puzzle that, uh, that, that was correct. No photograph. Not yet. I always don't eat crumpets while you're trying to make, or drink tea and crumpets <laughs> when you're trying to mix an antidote. Number two, don't try to talk to somebody while you're trying to mix an antidote. The chemistry is very important. Number three, if somebody, if you have somebody that's kind of a prisoner, you, it pays to watch them or have somebody watch them because apparently people like that can escape. <laughs> Seems like and apparently people can escape. <laughs> yeah, people can escape, you know. I mean, we think that they can tie these things better. And, and, and uh, four, you know, the, um, these, these batteries can be really, really <laughs> uh, finicky. Okay. It seems like uh, I don't think George learned much because you know was it, he ran into Neville Eustace. <laughs> he certainly didn't leave well, no. the guy's name. <laughs> you know, so you know, so <clears throat> he's having trouble, you know, focusing on that little aspect. And that's how highly he regards the man, right? So, and George was pretty sure from previous episodes that the flying dinosaur. The, the flying thing drawn on the, the, the tattoos and the and the what she drew on the sand and everything that was a flying dinosaur so i don't i don't think okay george you don't have that. to have it you know i'm not going to force it on you like i did last week so oscar <laughs> and lawrence uh, have have learned they've they've pushed their boundaries and there's something else i sort of wondered about as well that we obviously figured out that the the tribal native has control, or at least some kind of control over yeah. the beast, uh, or, or can communicate in a way that it understands in a very primitive way, maybe, I don't know, something else. Certainly seemed like it came when she called. Yeah. With that. That's true. Right on. That's definitely worth, worth learning. And this, this is kind of interesting, too, if, uh, if we think about it in terms of Oscar has learned that dinosaurs are real. Oscar has learned that, and you know, people around him also are feeling this way, that Challenger was right. It means that there was a lot of doubt that Challenger was right. Yeah. Except for uh, 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 George, who, who was sure that, you know, we were... Of course there's dinosaurs, you know, right? This expedition is going to be, we're going to find them. And, you know, so he was overconfident. Totally overconfident yeah. That's this is why he's not surprised that <laughs> the thing showed up, right? I think right. what we all, we've all learned, too, is that Messenger is going to kill us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, we bring, if, we, if we possibly bring back any remnant of this, this vessel. Well, this is super you interesting. You break it, you bought it. Because yeah. our journey just got immensely complicated. And uh, yeah, I have awesome. a picture of us yeah. throwing a dinghy back across <clears throat> the Atlantic. <laughs> We're going to have to do some serious rebuilding. Hey, no, going back? What are you talking about? I'm talking going forward through the jungle well, and to the yeah. plateau. That's going to be interesting. Yeah. yeah. The Amazon and God knows through the uh, River of the Gods, through the White Rock Teeth. The uh, something gorged the caverns of the mother, mother, and under the fiery eye goes. And now it's even because otherwise it's going to be a nice sightseeing tour, but now we have no ship, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe we don't. You know. yeah. All right, <laughs> um, we've got a few extra minutes because uh, that was such a dramatic, so uh, opportune place to stop, sure. Uh, do we stop the recording Let's, or? No, it's still. I thought we, we could continue the recording oh. and talk a little bit about uh, impressions, talk about League's adventures, you know, our usual post game, um, how's it working for you kind of. Just, just to clarify, how many star points did we get in the end? XP? XP? Sorry, start, start, uh, sorry, XP, yeah, sorry. Yeah, three for Oscar and Lawrence and two for, for George. Uh, I was supposed to get any for role playing, or is that, that not a usual? Ah, thing? I would have oh. forgotten. Wait, do you think anybody role played today? Oh yeah, I think so. I think we all yeah, did. there is there is some good. I, I favorite 
role play moments for me were the inability to remember the name of Left Hand yeah, ends up being being carried through the entire session. <laughs> I love that. Turning the crane machine into you know the oh, the pterodactyl slapping device yeah, of the future. Awesome. That's that's genius. And having crumpets, <laughs> deciding that he's going to be messy with the crumpets, and then blowing the roll and blaming yeah. it on the crumpets. Yeah. It's that's pretty. Uh, I, I like that an awful lot. So yes, yeah, role playing point for everybody so far. Hey, that's good. Do you know what that means? I have 15 XP. That means you could buy a talent. Even. That means I can buy a talent, which is what I've been thinking. Mm. No, but buy a resource. That? Although What's it that? would be, I mean, we have to justify buying a resource in such a situation as this. Yeah, and, but it was it was a good session. I, I liked the inside of that, you know. You know. I, I enjoy. I definitely enjoyed watching the other characters, even though even though uh, of course was very often to kind of like incapacitated or you know or what have you. It, was, it, it felt like, it felt like in, in terms of what was going on, it was perfect. So, I mean, in, in this game in particular, it, it's just um, with ubiquity and, and those adventure and what have you. It's really fun to watch the other characters. Yeah. I was worried that he wouldn't be able to wake up. Yeah. Uh, but you know, telling myself, well, you know, there's there's Proctor and Gamble and Tanvir and right. and there's all kinds of people to pick up. Well, it's not as much fun maybe as your own character. But. Yeah, but you know, it's, it's fine. And I'm just be like realizing all of a sudden, like, oh yeah, like, when, when you said Tanvir was right next to to to, uh, to Oscar, it's like, well, it makes perfect sense. Because I know that Tanvir has that more hat. <laughs> whatever. He's, whatever he's not dead. Oh, you know, uh, man, you know, but, you know, well, probably that's, not. that's, yeah, probably not that, but, um, you know, using that kind of inspiration really helps, and, you know, remembering that that's, this is what these things are up to, or you know, they're, what they're um, good at, what their, what their, you know, flaws and weaknesses and, and their chocolate salad, so that's kind of, kind of the way reject something like that. You know, because I can kind of consider Grover hands off and everybody else, you know, it's kind of like free, you know, free game, but it's there in the scene. Especially if they're not really being played by somebody else at that moment. And because they're always there, now. and we, we run right. the risk of forgetting them. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> yeah, if, if one were to nitpick any negative aspect from this session, and I stress again that it would be a nitpick, it would be that we perhaps didn't give enough camera time to the henchmen. Because, you know, there was a little bit of an opportunity there of hunting the, uh, well, we did do the hunting of the, of the woman who escaped, uh, and we maybe could have introduced them into the scene where Garibaldi was unconscious. Uh, on the flip side, which is what I think actually happened and explains why we didn't do that, it would have messed up the pacing, which was really intense. And, and so I, that's why I, I don't classify it as a negative. It's a nitpick because the, the positive side is that the pacing was amazing. We got a lot of genre out of this session. I think there were, you know, we got a bit of humor with, uh, with uh, Nigel and, and Eustace. And <laughs> the name. We had... Crescendo. Uh, a crescendo of the action in terms of the you know the the the, the lady escaping, um, the attacking of the ship, the appearance of the monster, the scrambling to get things done. You know, we had the peril of Garibaldi unconscious and is getting beat up by the ship rocking. We got the destruction of the ship. We got the swan dive off of the deck after, you know, trying to distract the thing with no weapons or anything. That was very Indiana Jones, or at least that, that's what it felt like yeah, to me. Yeah. Totally. Right, no weapons, no plan. It's just like going, hey, and then you got its attention, and now what do you do? And right. so, Especially so, in Last Crusade with the Spitfire. Yeah. <laughs> or the, yeah, was, the measure spit. <laughs> yeah. That was, and, that was great. And then we got the crane to actually come in and, and bat the, the, the creature, at least, you know. So... I think it was 
very kinetic and very genre, very pulp. So, so the, to me, this this was one of the most fun sessions we've had so far. Yeah, it's not like we were, we were constantly in danger. Like you know, when uh, when what is whatever whatever left hand's real name was, as soon as he shows up, like we're instantly in some kind of you know, there's instant, instant conflict, <laughs> instant, instant peril. What's going to go on with this? And uh, you know, you know, we're trying to get tr trying to get uh, you know for for Smythe to see you know, but of course that's a that's a thing in of, in and of itself. Um, you know, what happens with the what happens with the young lady? Thing that was going on, and then then there was like to be honest, there was the there was the peril of of Garibaldi waking up because he has no clue what's really going on in the deck. He's just shaking and whatnot, and, he's, and so I mean, really, like I mean, <laughs> it, it was kind of one of those those almost like those my guys that I mean, it's not really my guy, but like you know, having to be not not wanting to be um, to do something just for laughs or because it's ridiculous, you know. But at the same time, thinking, well, what would he actually do right now, considering this is what's going on? He's just things are shaking, but, you know, and of course he's going to try to, like, you know, first slam the ship into the ground, thinking, oh, that's great, I'm going to make her think she killed the ship. And then once things are going on, you know, it's it's either like, hey, we've got to go up, or I've got to discharge all this stuff somehow, and, you know. To bleed off the I, power. Yeah. Right, exactly. So it was, it was one of those things where, like, I, I smiled as a player, seeing Oscar actually make it up off the ramp because I knew I was probably going to kill the guy yeah. you know, you know, if I hit this thing and, and it went up into the atmosphere. And at the same time, I'm thinking, man, if I discharge a whole bunch of energy, I could kill everybody on the ship. You know, but I mean, he's just, oh, thinking, or at least on the surface. So he's just, but at the same time, I couldn't, I couldn't justify him not doing that. So oh, yeah. there was, there was kind of that tension going on even in my head, like, man, this is going to be interesting no matter what, uh, what happens. You know? It's quite interesting because I, I, having play, playing, playing, uh, a weird scientist, an inventor type. It it is different because uh, I can see that like you've got the George Mallory character that's it's like he's an explorer, he's uh, an adventurer. It's it seems like uh, it seems like a, a fairly easy to imagine how to play a character like that. Whereas when you're playing a weird scientist, you've, you've got, it, it's not, he's not that kind of character, he's not going to be uh, shooting everything left, right and centre. So, you, so luckily I kind of remembered about the crane, I thought, oh, that, that would be the sort of thing that he would do, you know, to, you'd apply engineering to the problem. Science. Science. Science, science is the answer to everything. And that's what I'm trying to do is with the character is, is 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 to play him as a, a as a scientist and as an engineer but also you've got to have fun it is a pulpy it is a pulpy setting so you want to be in I, the action as well oh actually i love the, the him like non-stop talking i got that like i mean we've got enough examples in some of the films we probably watched as kids you know, the old journey is the descendants of the earth and, and that kind of thing, where you kind of see like what a what the scientist would, you know would be doing in all these situations. And I, I thought yeah, I thought he was carrying it off really well. So you, you're, you're, I, I got more of a sense of, of Oscar. You know, the more you know in this session, I think that in a lot of other ones, it, uh, it, it became more and more uh, yeah. know, focused as a character. More. But but yeah, that was it. Really, the crane the crane thing was was fantastic. But just the just the him talking incessantly. Oh, you know, I mean, I thought this guy. I thought too. Uh, I'd like to maybe figure out a way to use his his weird science skill a bit more, if if there's something that we can do to maybe have a project, it, it, something to run a, alongside what we're doing in the adventure. Um, yep, that would be cool. Because it's extended roles over. Yeah. Well, obviously there's going to be some repairs to the ship. Or repairs the ship, and you had the, the idea last week of the translator. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the clockwork translator. So he could be tinkering with that device. It doesn't need like a huge lab, right? He could be tinkering with a small device as we move from place to place, right? So at some point, when he finally completes the extended task, right, he has the yeah. item, whatever it is. Right? So well, well you, I've got Procter and Gamble to carry all my stuff around, so. Well, that's true. Yeah, lucky them. Lucky them. I don't think Proctor's ever going to come out of the cabin again. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of those things when people, when people are talking about, well, who, can, who can actually show up to, to, with Lawrence Garibaldi? I'm thinking, maybe 
you know, maybe uh, maybe Grover, you know, uh, but um, you know, like tr you know, crawling in trying to see if Master wants another trumpet or something. Yeah. But I, uh, but Brock is not getting out of the room. The and one I was on deck. the one I was thinking about that we didn't introduce was Percy, your chronicle. Oh yeah. That's yeah, the one that's like, mm, he should have shown up and checked up on Garibaldi at some point. Yeah, he's, it's he's interesting. Like, he's, still an, he's, not an, he's, he's still an NPC. He's not, not a follower. Yeah, I'm probably going to buy that's him true. because first, I love Percy. He's, you know, he's, yeah, but the thing is, you got, you got, we've actually got some really interesting NPCs because we've got the chef guy as well. <laughs> you know, he's, he's got his own personality coming through now. Yeah. So... Um, but it is a it is a real danger, right? I mean, play produces momentum, right. right? So if we don't bring in these background characters, these secondary characters, or these these followers, uh, then we build the habit of not bringing them in. So it's, it's definitely something to talk about. Um, but yeah, I was imagining Percy was typing up his notes, and uh, you know, the, I never got a, I never got around to be able to to say it because things kept happening, but. You know, he's he's there laboriously working with his with his uh, you know, early type uh, typewriter machine, but you know, it's like sliding off the desk, and and uh, Anne was at that moment trying to develop uh, her photographic plates, and so the chemicals are sloshing everywhere, and all the shots <laughs> are being ruined. And right, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Yeah, I, I guess for me, for the, as far as introducing the henchmen and everything, I've kind of taken ownership over Proctor more than anybody else. I think it's the only one I can stand here a little bit. Um, but I always kind of hear Tanvir in in in, um, in, uh, in Robin's voice, and definitely, of course, you know, Grover is is, is Robin. I don't think anybody can pull, pull that guy off. <laughs> besides that, it's just absolutely perfect. Like, you know, his voice is your voice. But um, I always just think of Proctor, like, what would he be doing right now? Where is he right now? And then I just try to like, you know, put him in. Very often he's comical because he's a coward, so it's you know really kind of easy to do. But you know. But wow. it it works really well because if if Garibaldi is in trouble. He's not yeah. going to show up, so you don't have to play two characters at once. He's not no, going to yeah, show no. up, you know. It's like, no, 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 I'm not going there. <laughs> that's interesting. But I think, I mean, to me, that's something just came kind of naturally because that's, you know, I think if I was playing Grover or anybody else, I'd kind of just insert them where it seemed appropriate. Rather than ask, well, is Grover here? Yeah. 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 Grover might be kind of <laughs> funny in that scene. It's like, I'll never leave you, sir. <laughs> Serving you gives my life meaning. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can actually see him wiping, wiping his forehead, you know, as his, <laughs> his unconscious. My, my, my only reason for living, sir, is, is, to, is to be your servant. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, as the whole room is filling with, a light, you know, with lightning and... Uh, yeah, so please, you have to wake up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't, don't go, sir. <laughs> Wake up! Come back to me. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's funny. Like outside of uh, you know saving up some um, points to eventually um, secure um, Neslinder as as a, as a um, permanent patron for the for the group, which seems less and less likely now. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah. Explains <laughs> why he might be down from patron four to patron uh, one or something. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, but. Um, you know, I mean, honestly, the the place I'm I'm most tempted to invest experience points is in things like improving Grover just to make him a little more, um, uh, you know, stable or, or you know, able to do stuff that, or, or something like you know, actually adding person to the to the uh, the full the roster because because those those uh, you know, satellite characters are just so interesting, especially in this genre. Hmm. It's difficult though. So I'm looking at my experience points. And I'm thinking there's so many things that you yeah. could do. Things. I know yeah. there's so many decisions oh, and choices. You know, yeah. I could uh, I quite I quite liked that uh, that Jack of all trades talent that you were using because that is actually very useful, isn't it? I mean that and well educated is oh, yeah, well the same kind different. of thing but for the uh, but for a whole suite knowledge of specialized type, skills. Knowledge yeah. type skills. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to think about that. Got a few days. A delicious agony. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. And 15 is like a magic number. You can do anything with 15 points. So is it a new talent? Is it a new resource? Is it is it bumping a stat? Is it uh, so uh, many choices? Uh, with 10 no, points, you can take two to a three. You know, so that's that's yeah. kind of nice. 
at least Terry, we've got, um, you know, um, we're playing with enough velocity and frequency that we can actually rack up some tunes. Whereas, whereas an all for one, like it was, you know, great, but you know, uh, we played so infrequently that the gaining of experience point, points was, uh, was was you know was slow. So, you know, here we can right. actually look at it. But I, I think actually the the agony becomes more um, um, more focused here, with, even with gaining more experience points, because now you're looking, what well, do I do? I increase my fame? Do I save this for my fame when I get back? Do I, you know, save this for more rank in the league? You know, and it, you know, there's a lot of things to look at. But, you know, yeah, everything's useful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. What do you want your focus to go? And there's always a temptation of nickel and diming yourself, which is yeah. like, I got three points. I could put one point in this thing, and then next week, three more points. I could put one point in this thing. Or waiting until you have the full 15, and then you're like, oh my God, now the world is <laughs> yeah. open, right? Yeah. And then it's you the first blow time. 15, and you only get one thing. <laughs> and yeah, but it's, it's the first time I've banked them just to see what it's like to have the choice of 15, right? It's like, oh, okay. Now yeah. Look. But, yeah, you know, with, well, with, it, with, with, a, with a talent, with one of these talents, it, they, it's not just like one little thing. They, they tend to be pretty wide yeah. in their, their ability. If, if George so. were to buy a talent, just if, what would you... I, I don't know. I don't know. I want to consider the possibilities of because what I, what I usually do when I play these games and I'm trying to explore the whole ubiquity thing more fully right because what I tend to do is the nickel and diming myself mm -hmm. I tend to go for a ton of skills so as many skills as I can get and and, and you know I tried this time to do it less broad right and more focused on a couple of mm -hmm. things and and sort of prop him up as well as I could from the get-go and then not succumb to the temptation of just getting more points for skills or more points for talents and I said well let's try what happens with resources and so I bumped up mm -hmm. my Royal Geographic Society to one and I bumped up my follower to one right so instead of instead of exploring the mechanical more points gives you better roles it's like let's try to see what the what the ranks and the yeah you know th those that Follow side up. of yeah. the of the character development right which is not the more points means better more mechanical right let's, let's try the more role play stuff what happens if i add this instead and so resources are incredibly Powerful. I mean, this is the way that you you signal to the game master about what part of the setting you want to interact with, but it also gives you control over that that part of the setting, and it's control that you can expand through role play. And yes, resources are vulnerable to being lost because of gameplay, but yeah. if it's something that you're really interested in, well, that's all right, you know. Because the temptation is there it. to just like get put that you know three body two body to a three body right and okay yeah that's nice but it doesn't change the role play right so the the, the, the talents and the res uh, the resources more than the talents change the role play right so especially that's especially when you get into rank two that's oh, what oh, yeah that's what rank I'm two is, is you know, rank so two I, is amazing. I have to read the rules again and, you know, explore those options because I think I'd rather open up the role play possibilities than just the numerical values right? so at this point. So what happens at rank two? You are a full member, aren't you? Yeah. That I mean, and a bonus resource. Well, I, I mean, like, well, at least in, 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 um, in all for one, I mean, I, I, gained, uh, I gained a couple of points to my fencing style because I, I rank in my fencing so on, but then I could borrow the talents of uh, the of the other members of the salon, you know, and in, in certain situations I could remember, well gosh, she used to do this here, you know, and have that moment of of, uh, <laughs> of remembering that. You and can there, borrow yeah, the, the leaves resources. resources. Exactly, yeah. So, you know, I, I think at some point I kind of, you know, borrowed a, a person from from the fencing salon, you know. But yeah, you can borrow all kinds of and you, you don't have to you're not committed to one resource, like depending on you know when you are, you're just taking one out of the, the bank, so to speak. And so you know, 
know, cash in in various different ways. Yeah, no, it's 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 very very useful. That's that's where life becomes really interesting. Is it like say, kind of opens wide up. Any final thoughts, gentlemen? Hmm. <clears throat> no, really, really good session. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, yeah, you. Actually, actually, you know, one the one thing I like about it, um, or like a final thought would be, it's although it's kind of a bummer that the ship is is kind of hurting. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it does open up that big giant um, possibility that you know this could go various different ways. You know as opposed to this indestructible resource that, you know, we're able to somehow keep, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know if we're going to be able to use the ship to continue on, whether we're going to have to trek through the jungle on foot, um, whether, you know, we're not going to be able to bring it back, whether we're going to be able to repair it, whether it's going to cost us time, and we need that opportunity. So there's a whole bunch of um, things that come up just from that, um, that misfortune. Yeah. Yeah. This, this genre is in particular one of those things where the journey is extremely much more important than the actual destination right yeah. so the fact that it just became much more complex than just fly over there right and keep going a couple of days now it's really complicated because yeah. we might not be able to fly we might fly a little bit and crash and have to walk the rest of the way we might have to start on boats instead of flying ships so the journey just became richer by definition, right? So I think that's an opportunity. I'm not too... Uh, I like the fact that the ship is broken. It's like, okay, cool. Uh, I, like, <laughs> I like the fact that we just made it to the beach. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> we, did accomplish, we did accomplish the, the, the travel, right? We did Land the, ho! Yeah. Yeah. We made it Session to the beach. Four. Made it still on the beach. <laughs> yeah, still on the beach. We've, we've broken the ship. <laughs> yeah, very good. Excellent. I had a lot of fun. All right. All right. Thanks, so, everybody. Thanks, everybody who watched. Yeah, yeah thank you. And uh, we'll see you on the next uh, episode of um, The Sky Is No Limit. Thanks very much, guys.